our topic concerns opportunities and our speaker is Wilf Wheeler sat here on my right. Wilf enjoys acting and it is in his blood. I'd be very surprised if he is not in front of an audience of some sort when he is grown up. What is fascinating about Wilf is that he has dyslexia but has great skill with language. He is one of the kindest and funniest people I know and I can guarantee that he will entertain you and make you think this evening. Our proposer is Konstantin Arco, who comes from Austria, his, and his first language is German. He is a joker and is excellent in the first league for rugby. I guess you could say he's the joker of the pack. <laughs> our topic tonight is finding hidden strengths in time of difficulty, which is something that is close to Will's heart. I am, but I am sure that you, many of you will feel a connection with him today. But your applicant was asked, what would you consider to be your main strengths and weaknesses? Well, he began, my main weakness would definitely be my issues with, with reality. Sometimes I can't tell what's real from what's not. Okay, said the interviewer, and what's your strengths? I'm Batman, he said. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to hand you over to our speaker, Will. Thank you, Harry. Over thousands of years, human beings have adapted and evolved significantly. As a race, we are becoming more and more intelligent every single day, from advances in technology to building skyscrapers. But even though we possess all this knowledge, still, at times, we can be so narrow-minded and thoughtless. How many times have you sat yourself down in front of the mirror and told yourself, I wish I, w I, wish I had a smaller nose? or I wish I was taller, or even I wish I was better at maths. It seems to me that all we ever do is compare ourselves to others and want to be perfect, which we all know is impossible to achieve. Nothing is ever good enough. How many times do you put yourself down a day? I can imagine quite a lot. We're all guilty of it. Sometimes it seems that we're never even doing it because it's almost programmed in our brains. But when do we ever stop and think, actually, you know what, I'm quite good at this, or I'm quite good at that, probably rarely if ever, and that is where we fail ourselves. Isn't it funny that when somebody pays us a compliment, we never believe them or tend to shrug it off, but when somebody says something negative about us, we can't stop thinking about it. Within the animal kingdom, the predator, so for example a lion, would usually go after the weakest member of the pack because there's more chance that the predator will be successful in catching its prey. In this sense, humans are not that much different from animals, like lions. Bullies often tend to pick on and single out those with obvious vulnerabilities because they're easier targets. Isn't it odd that such an intelligent race can act just like simple animals? We should be celebrated for our differences, not singled out. In William Golding's book, Lord of the Flies, Piggy is excluded and teased because he wears glasses. But if it wasn't for Piggy's glasses, they never would have been able to use them as a magnifying glass to start a fire. The very thing that Piggy was teased about turned out to be the instrument that saved him and everybody around him. I believe that our weaknesses do not make us who we are. But that does not mean that they are not a big part in our lives. I also believe that God has given us these differences to make people stand out from the crowd. Some of us, some of us might find these differences and difficulties very challenging to cope with. But we all have differences and weaknesses, no matter who you are. Even the great Albert Einstein had difficulties. As a child, he was called thick and dumb by his teachers, who refused to teach him because he was too stupid. Albert Einstein was dyslexic. However, this didn't get him down. He continued to work hard, seeing and understanding the, the purpose in his work, even when he was feeling so misunderstood and so isolated. Of course, later, he became one of the most famous scientists of our history. As the great English poet, William Henley, puts it, 
It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Differences and difficulties are what make us human. Nobody is perfect, but a thing isn't beautiful because it is perfect. God made many diamonds, but he only made one you. You are unique. <laughs> so how does God fit into these strengths and frailties of humanity? Perhaps we can view God as a gardener and people as grass. Some people are bigger, stronger, even more sturdy than other people. But no matter how big or sturdy you are, you are never beautiful alone. The gardener keeps the people long, healthy and strong, for together they make a beautiful garden. Not as one, but all together. But there will always be weeds and thorns who want to avoid the gardener and want to be higher. They want to seem colossal compared to the tiny people that stand powerless beneath them. A good gardener will keep things equal amongst the grass and make sure that no weeds or invaders will interfere with their long journey of peace. A good gardener will be patient and look at each and every individual element until he gets everything just right. Then, one day, a flower blooms and the gardener knows he is no longer needed. For one seed creates millions of flowers. Yes, there will be weeds and bad people among us, and there always will be, but there will always be a flower, hope, for humankind and the gardener. Nothing lives forever, but a thing isn't beautiful because it is eternal. A thing is beautiful because it is growing. The one thing that you have that nobody else has is you. Your voice, your mind, your story, your vision. Thank you. Thank you for your inspiring speech. Now, is there a member of the audience who would like to ask you a question? Uh, yes, please, if I may. Um, may I say that I found that absolutely riveting, so much so that I could hardly move and I could hear, couldn't even breathe. Thank you very much indeed, but there was one thing I was hoping that you might mention, um, and if I may ask a question, something I was told when I was a boy, um, does opportunity knock? <laughs> <laughs> opportunities everywhere and the thing that makes people great in life is the strength to know when those opportunities are called. Thank you very much. Thank you for your thoughtful response. I would now like to call upon Constantine to give the vote of thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm sure that you're all impressed with Wood's excellent speech about hi pulling hidden strengths and making opportunities. <laughs> Will you agree with me that Wood took the opportunity to inform, entertain, and inspire us here with his word chosen words? My team and I have learned something great from this opportunity for public speaking. And we would like to thank the Rotary for organising this excellent event. For many of us here, this would have been the first time speaking to an audience of this size. And when we come across these great events at Future and Senior School, we will all feel more confident to have a go at it. I also want to thank our attentive audience who took the opportunity, despite the cold weather, to come here to prep. And the arch and the arc is going at 9.30. <laughs> I'm sure many of you would prefer to watch I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of This. But we appreciate your company. Thank you so much for the gentlemen in the audience who asked with such a carefully planned question. 
And it adds another interesting dimension to the subject. Finally, thank you to the catering team here at Prep. We hope you all enjoy the drinks and biscuits. Now let me tell you a joke. <laughs> when I see lovers' names carved in a tree, I don't think it's sweet. I just think it's surprising how many people bring a pen out on a date. <laughs> <laughs> this suggests you can never be too prepared for your first opportunity. <laughs> this opportunity tonight. We hope we have made the most of it and that, will, and that it will inspire many to actively choose public speaking in the future. Thank you also to you, our attentive audience. Thank you for listening.